Hi, my name is Stephen James, and today I'm going to share with you the dangers of self-development. Now, you're likely watching this right now because you're already into self-development, and I think that's a great thing. It's great that you want to improve yourself to be the best that you can be, and also to create the best life possible for yourself and for those that you love. Self-development has changed my life in so many incredible ways. It's made me who I am, and I'm so incredibly grateful for other people sharing generously their expertise, their knowledge, their experiences, so that I can benefit and learn that and apply that to myself and my life. That's made me who I am today. And I've been involved in self-development for over 15 years at a very deep, deep level. And while it's great, I think there's so many incredible benefits to it, you should absolutely have an open mind to improve and be the best that you can be. I have, however, noticed that there are some dangers. And there's a few roadblocks that I see a lot of people uh, kind of hit as they get into self-development. And I wanna spend some time on this video addressing that for you. That some of the things that I mentioned here, you might be going through. Or just by you getting into self-development, you might have noticed these challenges that have come along with it that are actually negatively affecting your life. And that should never be the intention or purpose of self-development because self-development is a way for you to have awareness of the things I'm gonna to mention to you, but other things as well, so that you can make progress and improve and change those things. So that, again, you can be more whole, you can be the best version of yourself possible. So let me share some of the dangers with you from my experience going through these things, but also working with a lot of people and you know, doing this for over 15 years. I think one of the biggest dangers that I see a lot of people that get into self-development uh, get caught up with is information overload. You see, there's so much information that's available for free, and I think that's a great thing. You know, it's great because of the internet. You know, you can access any you know the answer to any question that you might have. You can learn from other people on YouTube or podcasts or blogs or social media, whatever it might be. And it's incredibly valuable to be able to consume all that information and knowledge to be able to apply it to yourself. But the challenge that a lot of people face is too much information. And I think it actually encourages more of what I call a dabbler mentality, a dabbler way of living. Where you know people, they learn all this information, they think that more information is gonna serve and benefit them and help them improve. But oftentimes I see it do the opposite. Oftentimes I see people are consuming more and more information and they get overwhelmed, they get overloaded and they don't actually do anything with it. And the purpose of this knowledge and information, the power that it has, not just in consuming it but actually doing something with it, applying it, that's the real power. Knowledge is only potential power. The real power is when you take that knowledge and you apply it, you implement it to yourself or your life in some way, shape or form. And so. A lot of people are just consuming more and more information. They go to the seminar after seminar, course after course. You know, I've been to a lot of seminars now and oftentimes you see the people that are there that are known as the seminar junkies. Right? These are the people that go to seminar after seminar after seminar and I see them there you know, the same time again and again and I, hey, how's it going? How's your life going? And their life is the same. It's not improving because they get a feeling of significance just for showing up to these events or they feel good about themselves just because they learned something but their life doesn't change unless they actually do something with it and they apply it and they think that just by consuming more information and knowledge their life's going to change and it's not and I've noticed this to be a problem of having a YouTube channel and I conflicted with it because here I have over a thousand plus videos that I've made freely available for you for other people to benefit and while it's creating Incredible benefit that people have. People send me messages all the time about how I've changed their life, which is great. But with over 31 million views to my YouTube channel and millions of more on my blog and podcast, one thing that's been disappointing is that very few people actually do anything with what I share with them. And sometimes I feel a disservice. I'm like, you know, I should put in so much out there for free. Maybe it's actually better that I create products and courses that are more in depth that can actually meet people's needs and serve them at a deeper level rather than just more, more freely available content because there's already so much of that, it's already available. So you gotta be careful not getting caught up in information overload, analysis paralysis, which just keeps you more in your head, right? It keeps you stuck. 
and you know you have so much information you don't know what to do with it and all you know sometimes you get all this information and it's conflicting you you know you're trying to learn about how you can improve your health and your diet and here you learn about the paleo diet and then this guy over here says you should do the ketogenic diet and then this person says you should do the Atkins diet and this person says you should do intermittent fasting and then, you know you're you, all you have all this information and it's all conflicting with everything and you don't know what you should do and sometimes what's better what I think is a better solution for this is to conquer the dabbler. Okay, the dabbler always wants the newness, the shiny object. They think that more information is going to solve it. Listen, more information is not the solution. We're a society that's drowning in information, but it's starving for wisdom. And instead, you got to commit to what I call mastery. Mastery, that you don't need to have all this information. You already have most likely more than enough information, but you need structure. You need a plan to put it into action and apply it to your life, right? You actually need to commit to mastery and narrow your focus and put on the blinders and focus, you know what, I'm gonna go deep on this. I'm gonna go deep on really improving this one aspect of my life for the next three months. Or hey, you know what, I'm gonna go deep on really learning this. You know, if it's learning a certain subject of self-development, go deep with that. Learn it, I'm gonna try to figure out how can I apply this to my life and how can I implement it and how can I, you know, you know, really internalize it and integrate it to be a part of me so much so that I can master it and teach it to other people, right? I believe that we've lost in this society of more information of self-development, we've lost the mastery mentality. You know, you're just always getting more and more information thrown at you and the, the real masters throughout history, whether it's Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo or, uh, you know, uh, you know, Henry Ford or Thomas Edison or these people throughout history, Bruce Lee, right? These are people that mastered their craft, mastered certain concepts and ideas that have really enriched their life. So I think the ability to focus and utilize information properly and prioritize it, and if you're gonna consume it, take it in, but have a plan, be strategic about your learning. I think that is extremely important and valuable. Okay, in fact, for myself, I don't really consume that much just random information on YouTube and bouncing around and stuff like that. I'm very strategic about what I learn. I have a plan for my learning, my self-development. I decide, you know what? This month, I'm focusing on this. Or this week, I'm focusing on this. And if I'm gonna get information, oftentimes, I'm thinking, hey, you know what? How can I go find a coach? How can I get a, a course or a seminar or a, a program that's more in-depth, more structured, more quality information? Because if I only have so much time, I'm gonna put that time in the best quality information of the best sources possible rather than just aimlessly you know, reading books or, or watching podcasts or videos out there. I think having a plan for it is incredibly valuable, okay? So that was one of the first dangers and the solutions for it. The next one I'd say is developing too many rules and restrictions in your life. I see this happen time and time again and it was a big challenge for me. You know, you're getting into self-development, you're learning all these great things that can change your life and improve it, and you, say, and you hear from you know, all these different people, you've gotta do this, 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 and this, and you start doing each of these things for a while, and you create these rituals for yourself, and these habits, and, these, and, and before you know it, they all become these rules and restrictions. And you create this unrealistic way of living and being, this ideal that's impossible for you to, to actually live up to. You create this perfectionism mindset and you look up to the people that you're learning this from as perfect human beings that you know, you've gotta do this exactly as they say or exactly every single day. And often what I see is that creates a lot of pain in people's lives because when you have all these rules, you have these rules, I've gotta wake up at 5 a.m. and then I've gotta do this ritual and then I've gotta you know, not have these negative thoughts and I've gotta meditate two hours a day and I've gotta, you know, be reading every day and I've got to, you know, do this and this. And what happens is you, it's great. You have all these things that you're doing, but what happens when you don't do it? What happens when you create more and more of these things that you can't live up to? And now when you violate your rules and what you think you should be doing, your musts, what happens is you give yourself pain. You beat yourself up. You feel like you're not enough and you get frustrated. And then you go in this downward spiral where you're like, man, you know what? It's, you know, why even bother, why even do this? You get jaded about it, none of this stuff works, right? And then you try to get back on track again and you get some momentum, but then before you know it, you mess up, you, you violate one of your rules, you didn't show up, you didn't do this. Whatever it is, you beat yourself up. 
And then for a lot of people, they create so many of these that they're always in pain. They're always kicking their ass. They're always beating themselves up. They're on the pain train. And I was living that way for so many years when I first got into self-development. I believe I had to do all these things, all these rules and restrictions instead of understanding these are great habits to have in your life. But hey, you know what? If you miss a day, that's okay. Right? If you're trying to follow a certain diet and you get off track for a little bit, that's okay. To not, you know, sometimes a little bit of pain is useful to get yourself back on track, but if you're creating this unrealistic way of living that you're always in pain and always beating yourself up, that's a big part of the problem. In fact, the problem is that when people always beat themselves up, their brain, they're teaching their brain, why even try? Why even go for it? Why even put in this effort to do this if all I'm getting is pain for not being perfect? What I believe instead is you've got to learn to reward yourself. Something that's not talked about enough in self-development. You've got to learn that when you are doing something good for your life, for others, you've got to reward yourself to reinforce it. Because whatever gets rewarded gets repeated. Whatever you reinforce becomes stronger and a part of who you are. Right? You know, there's a great book called Don't Shoot the Dog, right? It's all about how to train animals, but also human behavior. And what they found is that the worst way to train an animal or a human is through negative reinforcement, to punish the dog for barking, to punish the dog for, you know, peeing or pooping in the living room, to punish it for not listening to you. That's the worst way because by giving pain, you're, you're basically going to create, a, you're going to rebel. The animal's going to rebel against you. So instead what they found is positive reinforcement is the better way to actually train an animal but also ourselves. That every time that an animal does something right or even close to it, you should reward it with praise. You know, it's just like, you know, a baby that learns how to walk. You know, if you have a kid and he's trying to learn how to walk, are you getting upset and yelling at the kid and punishing him because he's not able to walk yet? No, even the smallest sign of the baby walking and you know even if they walk and fall down you're praising them you're saying good job and you're giving all this love and attention which encourages the baby to keep trying and learning and doing it again and again to reinforce that pattern so you have to be careful with too many rules and restrictions you got to be careful being too hard on yourself which we all are you got to learn how to love yourself more you got to learn how to reward yourself and praise yourself and acknowledge and look at all the things that you are doing well and you're good at Okay, because there's always those things available. I get people that come to me all the time and Stefan, I'm having a hard time this, this, and this, and they're just beating themselves up. And I'm like, wait a minute, you're not even acknowledging all the great things that you're doing. You're not acknowledging how many days a week that you did do it, how many days throughout the month you were making progress or you did do those right things. Success breeds more success. You can only build off success, not failure. So that's a different mindset that I want you guys to as you're learning self-development, to not get caught up in that danger and learn to love and appreciate yourself a lot more along the way. The next thing I have for you guys is a danger of self-development of not feeling like you're, you're good enough. And often that's what feeds the self-development for a lot of people because you know, a lot of you that are getting into self-development or in it right now, you're doing it because you have problems in your life, you have challenges, you feel like you're not good enough and you're looking to improve. And that's a great thing. You know, I say that people change their life either out of desperation or inspiration. And for most people, it's desperation. When you hit rock bottom, you hit that threshold, and you make a decision that you're going to change your life forever. So most of us, we have that moment. But there comes a time where you have to learn to love yourself more and understand that you're doing self-development not because you, there's something wrong with you or that you're broken and need to be fixed, but mostly because... You're great, you love yourself the way you are, but you just want to improve yourself even further. There's a big difference. It's a big, important distinction in what I just shared with you, okay? So you're doing it, a lot of people, what happens is a lot of this uh, self-development gets marketed to them in a way that you're not good enough, you're not attractive enough, right? The whole health and fitness industry, or you're not good enough, you know, and you have all these problems in your life and they're pointing out these things that are problems that people now have awareness of, but they never, they just kind of live their whole life doing self-development, trying to solve all these problems or this empty hole that they're trying to fulfill that they're not good enough and they never get there, you know, and they always have that deep-rooted insecurity. So I think that you have to start with the foundation that you are enough, okay? You're amazing just the way that you are. 
And learning how to love yourself, I think, is one of the most important things. Because when you do love yourself and you're meeting and fulfilling your own needs, now when you're learning and growing, it's not out of lack. It's not out of insecurity, but it's out of, I'm already whole and great, but hey, how can I expand myself even further? How can I have more love in my life, more happiness, more joy, more success, more abundance, more whatever it might be? Okay? So that difference is very important. Okay? Love yourself. Very important. Now, the next thing I would say is always wanting more is a danger. You know, I, I had the privilege of uh, seeing Wayne Dyer speak before he passed away. And uh, one thing that Wayne Dyer would say is that more, more, more is the mantra of the ego. You see, more is something that can never really be fulfilled. We all have six human needs, something that Tony Robbins talks about. We have a need for certainty, security, okay? The way things being a certain way. We have a need for uncertainty, variety, surprise, excitement. We have a need for significance, to feel special and important or unique. A need for connection and love. Uh, also a need for growth and need for contribution. Now, significance is what a lot, is a need that a lot of people are trying to meet through self-development. They feel like they're not enough the insecurity, what I mentioned before, and they believe that by becoming more significant, they will eventually be enough. But the problem is these six needs, we all find a way to meet these needs, but there's one or two of them that we prioritize more than everything else that determines the, our entire future and our decisions in life. And most people in society, they value significance way too much. And the problem with that is you're guaranteed never to be happy and fulfilled because as long as you're driven by significance, you're always going to be comparing yourself to other people, right? You're going to compare yourself and see, well, all these other people are doing better than me and so therefore it makes you feel insignificant, not enough, which forces you to grow and improve. And that's great for growth and improving yourself, but you'll never be happy because there's always going to be people that are further ahead than you or better in, what, you know, in certain areas of life that you're always gonna feel inferior or in insignificant too. It also screws you over as well because you never have enough. You need more and more and more and more and more and you're always feeding that ego that's within yourself and you'll never be fully satisfied. And I think it's, you know, it's, it is useful to want more, to grow and expand, that's great. It's a beautiful thing that self-development provides but you can't be doing it out of the need for significance. You can't be doing it because you feel insignificant and this is just a way to meet that need even further. You have to do it instead to prioritize these other needs more than significance. You can still have that need, it's great, but to value these other needs more, impor more importantly, such as growth or contribution or connection and love, those needs have no downside to them. See, for me, it's pretty easy to tell people that know me, one of my top two needs is growth way more than significance because I believe that if I grow, I will automatically meet that need of significance. Contribution is a high need for me as well. If I contribute to other people's lives, they will make me feel significant. I get people every day that tell me I've changed their life and I don't need to work for significance. It just shows up in my life because of my growth and contribution. You see, so it's difficult to get into this. It's such a deep thing that, that I'm giving you guys awareness of now but it's one of the most important things that you can learn when it comes to self-development is understand how you're living your life, which needs you're trying to meet that are controlling your life and determining it and learning how to shift and condition yourself to not be so driven by significance or certainty, which are the two worst ones to allow to determine your life, but how to live your life out of more love, growth, or contribution. So, Understanding, it's great to want more, but it's the source and where you're going, how you're coming about it, and what you're doing it for, I think is important to acknowledge and understand because it will have a long-term negative effect that can really hurt your life in a, in a really negative way, okay? And another thing I'll share with you guys, I think, is a lack of balance. You see, I think a lot of people, they get into self-development and they have a certain problem and they focus on certain areas of their life to grow and improve it, which is great, but oftentimes they do so at the expense of other aspects of their life. I believe that self-development, the truest form of life mastery is what I call it, 
is having that balance so that you're giving attention to all aspects of your life so that you can be the best you can in all of them. You know, I know plenty of people that are into self-development who are incredibly successful financially, but the rest of their life is a disaster. There's plenty of people like that and also one of the dangers is are a lot of people they're trying to learn from and study those people. They're trying to learn from a Mark Cuban who's an incredible entrepreneur and they want to be like him and I agree there's incredible things to model from that person in terms of business and success. But you got to understand that a billionaire, a lot of them, and I know quite a few, they are looked up to because they have this financial success as an entrepreneur, but you would not want to model their relationships. You would not want to model their, their experience with their kids and their family. You would not want to model their health and how they treat their body, right? You would not want to model them in a spiritual perspective because they're not living themselves a spiritual life. And so you have to be careful who your role models are. I think it's very useful to say, okay, this is a role model for business. This is a role model for health. Okay, this is a role model for spirituality, for relationships, etc., finances. But always, always make sure you're making progress in every aspect of your life. Don't just be the guy who's rich or the woman that's rich and has all the financial success and feel significant, but you don't have a relationship with your kids, that you don't have love and passion in your life that you're not enjoying your your life to the fullest, that you don't have a spiritual connection with your creator, that you don't have gratitude and joy and appreciation and time and attention for what really matters in your life the most and what really truly is gonna give you the deepest levels of fulfillment. You know, I've had, I've made a lot of money in my life and it's great, but it's not the most important area of my life by far. My business is not the most important. It's my mission, it's my vehicle to serve people, but I also, understand that the joy that I get from it is nothing compared to what I can get from my relationship. It's nothing compared to the mindset and the emotions that I have or me caring for and loving my body and treating it the best way because my body is my temple that allows me to experience everything through, allows me to experience this gift of life. If I don't take care of that, then what's all the money for? You know, your health is your wealth. I don't want to be the richest man in the graveyard. I want to make sure that I take care of what's more important than just making money, which a lot of people in self-development, I feel they neglect and they just focus on business and money and they're not taking care of their temple. They're not taking care of their mindset and emotions. You see, that's when you get a Robin Williams who achieves all the success but kills himself. That's how you get an Elvis Presley who achieved all the success and kills himself. That's how you, you you see all these different people and countless examples of them, a John Belushi, people that gained all the significance of other people loving them and they had all the success in the world but they didn't take care of what mattered most, the other areas of life that are always going to bring you the biggest returns and if they put even a fraction of the effort and energy they put in their career to their health, their mindset, their emotions, their relationships, their spiritual life, they'd have a totally different quality of life but it's challenging once they have now been exposed and achieved all the success and that's their identity and who they are and they have all this pressure as a celebrity from the outside world, their agents and fans and all this sort of thing to maintain that. And so they have to put so much focus into that but it comes at a cost of taking away other aspects of their life and there's nothing wrong with doing that temporarily. You know, I've done that and had to say, you know what, I'm going to spend a few years of my life working on my business or a few years mastering finances. That's fine. You have to go out of balance at times in your life but as long as you return to center, as long as you return to that balance, that's what's most important. That you don't just go off, focus in this one direction, but you're not nurturing and taking care of these other aspects of your life, right? Because if you do that, it's gonna hurt you. You're gonna have to pay a price. And the challenge with that is sometimes whatever becomes most familiar, right? If you're just a career-oriented person and that's familiar for you, that's just what's known. That's what you're comfortable with. That's your comfort zone. and you know, you're going to stick with that because the devil you know is better than the devil that you don't know. You're not going to venture off. That's going to require you to change your, to push your comfort zone in a huge way and give up some of that, which is a terrifying thing for a lot of people. So I think having this awareness early on and as you go is incredibly important because, man, one of the most disappointing times of my life is meeting billionaires. And when I was a young 
kid trying to learn self-development. I looked up to these people and I met them and I was so disappointed. I said, man, that's what success looks like. That's what I'm trying to model and be like, this billionaire who's got all this money and people look up to on a pedestal but is you know, physically not taking care of their body, that doesn't have relationships, that doesn't have a great relationship with their kids and the spiritual life and all these different things. I'm like, man, I've got to find some new role models. I've got to find some models for health and relationships. And I've got to find people that have it all. Or I've got to find people that are living their life based on my criteria of success, which is more life mastery, right? They have that great balance in their life and they're more whole. And I'll leave you guys with one more danger, which is the hustle mentality. The hustle mentality. Now, this is advocated and promoted a lot online, right? There's certain influencers and experts that say you gotta hustle. And hustle is great advice if you're a lazy person, if you need to be taking massive action in your life, if you need to, you know, if that, that advice is incredibly important for so many people and was for me as well and still is to this day. But they don't teach you the other aspects. You see, Carl Jung, great psychologist, he taught about different archetypes that we have. And we use different archetypes from mythology as a way of living our lives. And one of them archetypes is of the king, warrior, magician, lover. You might have heard of this before. We all have these different archetypes within us. We all have a warrior. A warrior is our ability to hustle, to get shit done. Our ability to tap in that resourcefulness, that side of ourselves of doing whatever it takes. A warrior says, if there's a wall, hey, I'm gonna break through the wall, I'm gonna go over it, I'm gonna go under it, I'm gonna get around the wall in some way, shape, or form. That's a warrior. We all need a warrior within us, okay? That's a part of us that we need to be able to access. But there's also another side of us, an archetype, which is the magician. The magician is able to accomplish things and do things without the effort and the force that a warrior needs to do. A magician can use its, its ability to believe or have faith or to manifest or create things without having to put in the actions that a warrior would have to do. That's another part of yourself you have to cultivate and develop. We also have the king. The king is the one that, hey, doesn't need to be the one that's out on the battlefield and hustling. I mean, you know, the king can get a different perspective. The king is able to uh, direct things and design things and have altitude and different experience of looking at things where the warriors on the field, the king has a totally different perspective on what's going on. And there's also a lover, a side of us that loves, that is able to give and receive love and understand that love is the most important thing. Love is often what we're doing all for. You think you wanna be significant, but only because you condition yourself to believe that if I'm significant, then I'll be loved. Because as a child, we all have a certain blueprint or a belief that uh, we've created that we believe that what we have to do to be loved because we're all born in unconditional love. Every baby that's born has to be loved to survive. If they're not loved, it's called failure to thrive syndrome and a baby will physically die. So we need love, we need physical attention. But when you're a kid and all of a sudden, you know, you're getting this unconditional love from your parents because they have oxytocin, they have to love you. And then all of a sudden when that oxytocin wears off, and you're not getting that same love or attention, and all of a sudden you realize, hey, you know what, if I scream or I yell or if I do something significant, then I get the attention from my parents and they give me this love and attention, and all of a sudden you have a belief that if I am significant, I'm loved, and you live your whole life that way. Or if I'm funny and I get people's attention or I make them laugh, then I'm loved, right? We all have this blueprint that we've learned as a kid that determines how we live. And that's why I'm a big believer in understanding this and then using self-development, the deep self-development. These are things that you know, I can certainly help you guys with. I've been in this for a long time, but a lot of the surface level self-development that's out there isn't gonna go deep into what I think is this understanding of some of these potential dangers and how to really get to the root cause of things. So. The hustle mentality is a warrior, and that's incredibly useful, but there's a time where it's not always gonna be useful for you, and you have to learn and recognize these other parts of yourself and cultivate them as much, if not more, than just the warrior. I have a warrior I can tap into if I need to get shit done, but it's not, it doesn't define who I am. 
and warrior can lead the, the hustle lead can lead to burnout, not allowing you to get perspective and altitude to look at the bigger picture of things. That hustle mentality, hey, you know what? I know a lot of people they're hustling and they're already super successful. I'm like, why are you still hustling the way you had you did before? Right? You're at a different stage of your life now. It's great to still hustle, but now let's be more elegant. Let's try to get more done with less effort. What a concept that is. Right? Let's learn how to use leverage more. Let's not be smarter. Let's learn to hustle. You have to do that way for a stage of your life, but you're also going to be whole and cultivate these other aspects of yourself as well. Otherwise, you're just a hustle machine. Right? And these people that I see that are, you know, are still hustling like crazy, I'm like, it's great, but are you able to turn it off? Are you able to understand there's all these other aspects of yourself so you can be more whole, complete human being? Because the hustle that I see a lot of people continue to live in does not lead to happiness and joy and fulfillment. So self-development is a great thing. But, and it's not your fault, right? You know, I've encountered these dangers as well. But I think you know, as you go through this journey, you have to have awareness of these potential traps and dangers that you can fall into. And it's not the, the fault of self-development really either. I think there, there's so much self-development out there for every aspect of life, but I think there's certain pieces of it that are more important than others that we need to make sure we are understanding along the way, that we're loving ourselves, that we're cultivating our, who we are, we're, we're being intelligent, uh, uh, about the information that we're using. We're being strategic about it um, rather than just kind of blindly consuming information and taking this all in without having an actual plan and thinking about how we're going to use this in our life to really improve and enhance our life to a whole new level. So listen, I hope this video can serve you. I hope it can bring awareness to things that from my experience uh, maybe you could relate to within yourself as well. Um, if you're looking for some deep self-development work, that's what I've got my Life Mastery Accelerator for. I created a whole program every month. We do more advanced, deep training in every aspect of life of what I believe to be the most important things to learn, the things that enhance my life more than anything. You know, That's where my best content, my best strategies are. And it's for those that are not dabblers, but those that are committed to mastery and want to go deep in really improving and mastering their life. So you can learn more about that at lifemasteryaccelerator.com. Okay, lifemasteryaccelerator.com. I'll have a link in the description for you. But hey, if you enjoyed this, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos, and I'm excited to see you again soon in the next one. Always believe, commit your life to mastery. Talk to you soon.